Well, Nigel, how do you evaluate that performance? Uh, nervous. <clears throat> I thought we were nervous in the first minute uh, up until we uh, scored the equaliser. Uh, it's inevitable and understandable to a certain degree. I think the crowd were as well. I think we all were. When you've lost four games on the spin uh, and your last two home league games and conceded six goals, uh, then there's going to be players are going to be tentative. Uh, and then you saw us all flying forward, you know, in the Newport game at times and the Bristol Rovers. And to be fair, in the Bradford game, uh, results knock the stuffing out of you a little bit. And that confidence and the players, instead of going forward naturally, they just take a little step back. Uh, and we saw that, I thought, for the first hour or so of the game. So important to stop the rot today. It was. And we set out and we've been talking to the players for the last week or two. You know, The only way we do that is to stop giving goals away. And then, I don't know, an hour gone, we go and give another sort of schoolboy goal away. Uh, nobody's doing that in the opposition teams. You know, Nobody's giving us goals. We've had to work unbelievably hard to get an equaliser and create anything. Uh, and yet, again, we give goals away. Uh, we're, honestly, day after day, we're trying to drill it into them. You know, no chances, no mistakes, and players keep doing it. Disappointing, wasn't it? Because aside from that, broadly speaking, you defended very well. I thought we did. I thought the two centre-halves were good. Uh, Bish hasn't had an awful lot to do today, uh, but he was very competent in what he did. Back four was good. Uh, I thought Ollie Clark protected it well with George Maris. Uh, but also the importance of the subs today coming on. Uh, I thought they energised us. Uh, you know, at one nil down, all of a sudden Ryan Sturt comes on and looks and looks bright, uh, and Danny Johnson gets us a goal. So and Harry Charles on the pitch was brilliant to see. Well, you could say that those changes changed the game. Um, Sturk, as you say, a real battling performance from him, and Danny Johnson popping up as he does typically, right place, right time. That's exactly what he does, and that's his typical Danny Johnson goal. It's with his wrong foot, but he's just sort of steered it into the bottom corner. Uh, and after that point, I thought we were the most likely team to go and win it. Uh, Harry Charles has had the shot, which I thought he should have left for Ollie Clark. Yeah. He's charging through from the edge of the box, and you just think, leave him, get out of the way, and he'll put it in with his right foot in the bottom corner. Harry decides to have a swing, and it's the target, but the goalie makes a great save. But as probably undeserved as it would have been, we're not far off winning that game today. What about prior to that, the challenge from George Lapsley at the other end? That was an excellent last-ditch challenge. Yeah, it was. I think came another again, was giving the ball away again uh, in a, a, a dangerous area and then breaking at us. And uh, tippy, I think typified George's performance today, full of energy uh, and a goal-saving challenge. Yeah, George Lapsley won the sponsors' man of the match, but... Uh, what about Farron Rawson at the back there? He was uncompromising this afternoon. That's exactly what we're asking him to do. Uh, and all here, now the onus is on sort of him and Elliot Hewitt and anybody who steps in to make up for the loss of James Perch and, and Richard Narty and Will Forrester. You know, we've lost three centre-halves. We missed out on three or four in the transfer window. You know, half a dozen, it's a, it's a big loss. Uh, and everybody's got to step up now. Was a point about right on, on balance? Yeah, I think probably so, because I think they're a very good team. And you saw the quality that the League One uh, players had today. They knock it about well, they're comfortable on the ball. Uh, and we did, uh, we did well to contain them. And uh, as I say, it's a different game once you equalise. And we're in the faces a bit more, crowd are up, uh, roaring us forward. And uh, so in the last 10, 15 minutes, I thought we could have won it. Aside from the match now, Nigel, yesterday the news was announced that James Perch would be out for the season with a fractured skull. I know you gave your immediate reaction in the statement that the club released, but uh, having mused on it for 24 hours, what's your, what's your thoughts? It's probably even a bigger blow than we thought a few days ago. Uh, it's what we suspected uh, from the initial diagnosis, but to have it confirmed... Uh, I think to go into games that we are at the moment without him and Stephen Quinn, and we said a few weeks ago our best two players most experienced played at the highest level uh, we're going to try and get some results without them devastating for, for Perchy first and foremost uh, especially when you come into the end of your career and then he's got a decision to make at the end of the season what he does uh, but so absolutely devastating for him and then the impact it has on the rest of the team they're not daft in there they, they look it sometimes but they're not daft and they know they're going to be missing one of our, our best players you received a double blow as well uh, yesterday, didn't you? Uh, when you told me about Richard Naughty mm. out for eight weeks. Yeah, six to eight weeks. Uh, he got a whack in the Harrogate game, played with it last week, uh, had a scan and everything, and he's got some sort of uh, problem with the bone around his shin area. So uh, I think it'll be sort of six to eight weeks before he's ready again. Uh, and Will Forrester, 
We were waiting to see the lad on loan from Stoke. Uh, he's had a setback as well, so he's not going to be with us till the first week of October. So, if anybody's got any good news for us, we'd like to. <laughs> we'd honestly like to hear it because at the moment it seems we're taking punches from everywhere. Well, you got a point today, Nigel. That is good news. Well done. Thank you.